Hey Tigers, it's that time of year again. It's course selection night. It's tonight, February 4th, 5.30 to 7.30 at the main campus. We will also have a meeting for current freshmen in the auditorium at 7.30. Sophomores will continue to meet with their counselors all the way to February to review their four-year plans and hopefully will be done by the end of the month. So now what you need to know and what you need to expect will be covered in the rest of this film. So let's jump right in and learn about how to earn credits. Let's talk about earning credits. You must have a 70% or higher and good attendance both semesters. If you fail the first semester with, a, let's say, a 65, you must, you must at least make a 75 for the year to earn the credit. But if you fail the spring semester, you have to retake the semester again the following year or in summer school. To attend summer school, you must pay a tuition. You will only earn back one credit during that time in summer school. Jumping right into endorsements, our school has five endorsements, the Arts and Humanities, Business and Industry, the Public Services, STEM, and the Multidisciplinary Studies endorsement. Whichever endorsement you choose to study will end up on your transcript once you graduate. The mandatory credits you will need to have the following to graduate are the following, English 1, 2, 3, and 4, Algebra 1 and 2, Geometry, and an additional math, Biology, Chemistry, Physics, and an additional science, World Geography, World History, U.S. History, Government, and an Economics class, two years of a foreign language, one fine art credit. Remember, fine arts doesn't have to be anything special. It can be like art, theater, second year of band, drill team, dance, and even a digital art. A PE credit that doesn't necessarily have to be PE either. It can be dance, color guard, band, or JROTC. You will need to have a credit for health class, then five and a half elective credits. There are usually that are usually made up of the endorsements previously mentioned. Let's get into advanced courses. If you're planning on taking honors, pre-AP, AP, or dual credit classes, there are some things you need to know first. Pre-AP is usually just a stepping stool for getting ready for AP courses. AP courses are at a college level. Students taking the AP courses will need to take a AP exam in May to earn the credit. You will have to pay to take this exam, and you'll, if you pass the exam with a high enough score, you can earn a college credit. Dual credit courses are also at a college level. These classes are taught through Lone Star, but you can take them here at CHS. You will have to take the TSI in order to take the course you want, and you will get a discounted tuition to pay for the class. Students can also use their PSAT score if they meet the mark. If they pass the class, they will earn the credit for your Lone Star course taken and a CHS credit. Here are some things to know about performance acknowledgements. The following achievements can go on your transcript. Dual credit coursework. You must have 12 hours and a three-point GPA on a four-point scale. PSAT achievements like Committed Scholar, Hispanic Scholar, or the Merit Scholar. You can, if you score a three or higher on your AP exam, for SAT students, you must make a 410 on your reading and a 520 on your math portions to make it on the transcript. With ACT scores, you must make a composite of 28 points. For more performance acknowledgements, students can, make, can be recognized for earning a business and industry certification, along with reaching these achievements for being bilingual, making an 80 or higher on all four English courses, you must have been exited from ESL and score advanced high on TELPASS, take three or more LOT languages or other than English credits, or score higher, 80 or higher on level four LOT exam, or score three or higher on your AP language test. For distinguished graduates or DLA, you must take courses required for graduation with an endorsement and take Algebra 2. Required to use the top 10% rule. The top 10% rule means automatic, automatic acceptance to state schools, except University of Texas, who change their percentage acceptance rate every year. The level of the course you take or are planning to take determines the grade point skill you will be on. Remember that your GPA also determines your class rank. If you are taking AP or dual credit courses, you can earn up to 6 GPA points. If you are in core pre-AP or honors, you can earn up to 5 GPA points. Then level classes can earn up to 4 GPA points. 7 period class load sophomores and juniors can use their elective spots to take foreign language, health, fine art, or a PE or P credit. You can also use those spots for band, athletics, debate, orchestra, etc. Juniors, remember you must have a credit for English 3 dual credit to take English 4 dual credit. Seniors can use elective slots to take non-credit courses like office aid, late arrival, and early release. 
Seniors must have at least five scheduled classes and can spend the other periods on early release, double early release, or late arrival. An office aid period will count as a scheduled class, but you must be approved for that by your AP or counselor team. If you are needing any changes to your classes, you can choose from a variety of classes as long as they fit your credit log. For any more information you need on that, you can visit the Carmel High School website. Class of 2020 and 2021, students who are taking a third or fourth year class qualify to exclude that third or fourth year class from their GPA. This is for students who have an altogether GPA or 4.0 or higher. If you will be a senior and didn't use your waiver in your junior year, you can use it for two courses in your senior year. Students do an online GPA waiver form and you must fill it out each year. The course will still count as a credit, just not in your GPA. Remember, this form is online. Just go to your counselor's course selection site and fill it out. Ms. Joyner is in charge of these, so see her if you have any questions. This is not the same as a UIL waiver. Cool. Now we're into special considerations. Watch for your prerequisites. You cannot take chemistry if you haven't if you don't have the credits for biology and algebra. Once you take this class and earn that credit, you cannot take this course again. If you do not pass your EOC tests, you will be put in remedial classes and they will replace one of your elective classes. Seniors, if you want late arrival or early release, you must have passed your EOCs and you must have transportation for early release because you, can, you must leave the campus. Also, seniors, if you want to be an office aide, you must request it and have it approved and you must pass your EOC. Let's talk about added new courses. There is a new Spanish 4 dual credit. You will need to do the following procedures, like taking Spanish 1, 2, and 3 to be able to take Spanish 4 dual credit. Then you will need to take a placement test as well, a practicum in hospitality in which you must have taken hospi hospitality class and must have transportation. There is also a new mariachi course. Contact Ms. Stilly if you want to request the course, as well as a health and science course. The first year is called Principles of HST K350A-B. This is not a part of the academy. The second year is midterms, then the senior class is HST. Students can take up to two years of a dual credit anatomy, then a computer science class, pre-AP and AP Principles of Computer Science. These are not a part of the academy, so anyone is allowed to take them. We also have a workforce class taught at Lone Star, those for wanting to be an MP, EMT. Finally, we have added a marketing class for next year, principal, Principles of Marketing, Sports and Entertainment Marketing, which is just a one semester course. Let's get into paperwork. I know you guys don't wanna hear about this, but you need to know. For you to be in special courses, such as any sport, band, drill team, cheer, or to be a trainer, you must have a, f a physical on file. Those who do not turn in their physical will be placed in PE. There will be tryouts or auditions to determine if you make the team. If you do not make the team, you will be removed. Also, make sure to keep an eye out for summer camps. We all know Ben's summer camp is brutal, but if you're going, but you're going to a camp makes it more likely that you will get a guaranteed spot on the team. Lots of CTE classes fill up more quickly and require applications, so listen for those announcements. CTE course numbers all start with K. Dual credit courses require testing, a blue form, and money. If you, don't, if you do not have that, then you will be removed no matter what. So to end it off, here are the most important things that you need to turn in. It's best to always turn in applications that get sent to you for CTE courses and any paperwork. Today you're going to turn in your pink sheet of paper and you'll keep the white one. If you've been told to turn in other items like dual credit paperwork, be sure to pay attention to those dates. If you need a parent signature like for AP, dual credit, or pre-AP courses, please make sure you take care of that. So stay on top of your game. Don't slack off on turning things in. If you have any questions, make sure you check out our website or you can see or email your counselor to make appointments. Just ask us, and if that doesn't work out, then you can check the program of studies online. Okay, Tigers, remember, stay on top of your dates and your deadlines, and we'll be meeting for course selection night tonight, February 4th, 530, 730, here at the main campus. Come see us and make some final decisions for your high school courses. We hope to see you there.